Hello everyone, my name is Aidil and you're watching Aidil's Fish Mania. Uh, so I've been telling a lot of people on Facebook on how I breed fish in styrofoam box. Uh, so tonight I'm going to show you how I do it and how I set them up. Uh, so you can give it a try. Before that, uh, I think this method only works if you're living in the tropical climate because of the temperature if you're living in a temperate region where you have uh, four seasons uh, this might not work if you try it outside uh, but indoor uh, control the temperature of the room uh, should be no problem uh, the only difference is uh, if you're in tropical areas you don't need to do any water change if it's if it rains a lot but if you do it indoors then you do have to do water change uh, I don't do any water change because yeah, it, it rains almost every day here so new water enters the, the tank and the old water will just flow out uh, by the holes I poke into the styrofoam box so let's have a look at how I do it This first tank, uh, this is how I set up my uh, chocolate grummies, uh, Spherictus osmo osformunoides. Uh, if you can find them, I set this up uh, oh, five, six months ago. I put uh, one male and two females in here, and then uh, I start seeing fries, a small fry. What I did was uh, took a styrofoam box about two feet by one and a half feet, I think. Uh, Twenty-four inch by eighteen inch uh, styrofoam box. Fill it up with water. I put lots of. Uh, Ketepa leaves and mahang leaves in here. Uh, one driftwood. Sorry. Oh yeah, there it is. One driftwood. Some uh, stem plants. These are uh, kabombas, and I think I put some igaria in here. But I don't think the igaria is still alive. It might have died. Oh here, here's one of my. Here's one of my. I lost it. Where is it? Oh, this is this is. I think this is my uh, second batch of fries, chocolate grammys. Uh, this method works, but doesn't produce a lot of fries because maybe most of them die. It's one of my breeder. This is the male. Oh, oh relax, relax. Oh, it's gone. That's the male. Let's see if we can find the female. So the key thing about this is you need to have a lot and lot of floating plants. Because all the fry will hide between the roots and there's lots of microorganisms that uh, attach to the roots like rutifers, uh, infusoria. Those will be the primary food for the fries once they are spat out of their mother's mouth so chocolate grammys they are mouth brooders the female uh, they are paternal mouth brooders so the female actually guards the the egg and the fry once they hatch i cannot find any there's too many plants in here yeah but there are there are fries in here uh, last time i counted there's about eight or nine fries uh, I think it's around uh, they might be just around uh, maybe two weeks old I thought I saw one it's really really tiny around two millimeters long I cannot find any usually they stay underneath the leaf 
that's where they like to hide but now I cannot find any well anyway this is how I breed um, most of uh, my labyrinth fish uh, right here uh, I have my Bora Rasmaclatus the dwarf Bora. this one this two but for some reason they have not um, bred for me yet I have not had success with them using this method I know a lot of people uh, did this method and yeah, it worked out great they say they breed like guppies but for some reason mine is just not breeding uh, same setup uh, some ketepa and mahang leaves uh, Akabomba, uh, lots and lots of floating plants. Uh, they are in here around, I uh, see, around four months already. Still no fries. But the chocolate gram is doing great. Uh, this just one adult. I think that's, that's the female. Yeah, that's the female there. Hey, wait a minute. She might be brooding eggs. I'm not sure. Let's see if we can turn it to the side. Yeah, she is brooding eggs. Look at the size of that mouth. She is brooding eggs. I'm not going to disturb her that much. Sometimes they'll swallow the eggs. Sometimes they'll just spit it out and then leave it there. Oh, there's another first batch fry. That's not no longer fry. <laughs> that's, that's my first batch. Bigger than the... Uh, the one we just saw earlier so I don't I don't remove the parents I don't remove any older fries I just leave them in there and that might be the reason why lots of fries are gone they might eat probably eat the the younger fry but and this is what works for me so if you want to try this yeah uh, go ahead and give it a try Right there, I have my uh, fancy beta fry. I have some coys in that, and, and a fancy red in that, and a royal blue in that one. Uh, this is what I feed them. These are all uh, Moinas. Moinas. And Daphnia Magna. Of course, there's lots of mosquito larvae. So I harvest them every day to make sure they don't turn into mosquitoes because yeah, it's gonna be a nightmare to sleep if you have lots of mosquitoes here. So this is my little breeding area, quite messy. Uh, in this container, I don't have anything. These are just water catchment. I use this, this water to uh, do water change and these are more magnas if you can see right there those are all Daphnia magnas in this big tank I've just only put water in here uh, this morning uh, I'm planning to breed guppies in here uh, fancy guppies uh, to sell at my shop so, yeah, okay. Well, let's go inside my man cave and see what's going on. Also messy. <laughs> I'm, I'm a messy person. Right here, I have my beta oscillata. Uh, these betas have white spots. Uh, if you can, uh, let's see if I can zoom in. If I can focus the camera. Uh, nah, it's not gonna focus. But if, if you can see at the at the fins, there are egg, uh, lots of spots. So I'm gonna still treat them with uh, methylene blue and some salt. Uh, 
that is the mahang leaf right here I'm just setting this tank up for I'm gonna move the uh, beta oscillator into this tank uh, these are two empty tanks I mean, still haven't had any idea what to do with them uh, these are beta albimaginata that's the male I cannot find the female what's the female oh, the, the, the female is at uh, behind that driftwood on that Anubias and then in here I have my uh, what was in here Chan, uh, no, 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 no. It's beta chanoides, yeah. The male, male beta chanoides, uh, brooding eggs. Uh, he's not gonna come out. I rarely see him. Uh, he usually will hide at the back there. When the female was in there, the female is quite friendly. Uh, she always come to the front, uh, asking for food. So I put the female in here. Oh, there she is. Uh, a temporary tank until I can get a, a better tank set up for her. This is my Beta Livida breeding pair. I cannot. That's the female at the back, actually. The female at the back. Yeah, this this tank actually is not complete yet. Uh, I was planning to put more driftwood, uh, some substrate, uh, and more plants. I, I didn't have the time to get them yet, but I've I've seen them, uh, the male flaring at the female in this uh, pot, but there's no bubble nest, so I don't think that was a a courtship. Maybe it's just a a normal flare. That's my female at the back. This is my Paros Romanus Harvey pair. That's the male. That's the female. This thing is also not uh, not completed yet. There's a lot of thing I, I need to add in here, so there won't be breeding yet. Okay, what else we have? Okay, this is beta put next. Let's see if we can have a wider picture. That's the uh, that's a male there. Another male there. These are holding tank actually. This is not a breeding tank. So I don't expect them to breed. Uh, I think I'm gonna set those two at the back for putting a breeding tank. I'll put a pair each. So right here I have a, uh, another pair of beta nivida. Actually, there was a tank right here, and then suddenly it cracked and spilled water. So I have to move it down here until uh, I can get a new tank to put back there. Okay, so that's a little tour and a little tutorial of how I breed fish in a styrofoam. So I think that will be all for today. I'll see you again next time in Idols Fish Mania. Bye bye.